Good evening, and it's lovely to be with you again. We're thinking about light and dark this evening, and we'll continue to think about Jesus, and particularly what happened after his resurrection. But to start off with, I think we all like to see. We want to know what's going on. We want to know what's going to happen. We prefer to live in the light than in the darkness. We want to know where things are. We want to know where we're going rather than bumping into things all the time. If I was to walk around my house in darkness, I'd probably tread on a whole load of Lego bricks. That would be painful and I'd get hurt. What do I do? I turn the light on so I can see. And actually often we're afraid of the dark. Dark is associated with fear. And the minute it feels like we're in dark times, there's lots of fear, there's lots of darkness, there's lots of uncertainty. So where is their light? Well, we will see this evening that there is light and we'll continue to think about Jesus and see how he gives that light. We've looked at the last few weeks over his life, over the, how he had to heal people, over the, how he had with just a word to calm a sea, power over creation. We've looked at his death, how he took God's right anger for us, allowing us to come to God knowing that the salvation work was finished. Oh, we've looked at his resurrection, uh, how Jesus came back to life, how Jesus is the only one who defeated death, the one who means that all of God's promises can come true and are true in Jesus. But that leaves us the question is, where is Jesus now? And what is he doing? Well, maybe you think that after you appear to all those people, he just wandered the earth. And somewhere out there he's wandered the earth. Maybe he's wearing a hat a bit like this, sitting in a corner of a desert, just wandering around. Well, let me read Acts chapter 1 verse 9. It says this. After Jesus said this, he was taken up before their very eyes. That's before his uh, disciples' very eyes. And a cloud hid him from their sight. He was taken up. He ascended into heaven. Jesus appeared to many people and then he ascended into heaven. So that's where he is now. Second question, what's he doing? Well, we've seen that his work in saving people is done. So maybe he's just sitting around with a cup of tea and a biscuit. Well, let me read another verse from the Bible. This comes from the book of Hebrews. It's in chapter 10 and it's verse 12. It says, But when this priest, that's talking about Jesus, had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. So yes, Jesus is sitting. But as when the Bible, it shows that he's not sitting on a comfy sofa, but in fact, he's sitting on a throne. This is the best Lego throne I could do, um, but you'd have to imagine. Jesus is sitting on the throne. Well now, who sits on the throne? A king. So what is Jesus doing now? He's ruling. His work of saving people is complete, but he is still ruling now. His kingdom has started, he is the king. He is in complete control and he's working everything for good. After all, he is good and perfect. So when things look out of our control or appear dark to us, or do we get anxious or worried? Or do we look to the one who has everything in his control? Are we looking to Jesus at this time or to someone or something else? But what does it actually mean that Jesus is ruling in the here and now? Well, there's a description of this in the book of Revelation. It's in chapter 1, and I'm going to read verses 12 to 16 out. And it says this, I turned round to see the voice that's speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and the golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, 
and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in the furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun in all its brilliance. Well, there's quite a lot of imagery there in those verses. I need to explain a bit about what some of them say. So it talks about the Son of Man. Well, there it's talking about Jesus. That's the name that was used for Jesus. It talks about how he's dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet with a golden sash around his chest. Well, that's what we looked at with the curtain being torn in two. Jesus is the High Priest. Jesus is the one through whom we can come to God. He is the one who grants complete access to God for those who are trusting in Jesus. The hair on his head was white like wood, as white as snow. Now we might, that make, might feel that makes him just sound really, really old, but actually in the Bible, white is a symbol of wisdom. So that description of Jesus, how white his hair is, shows how wise Jesus is. Jesus is ruling with all wisdom. He knows exactly what's happening, and he knows why it's happening, and he's in control of it. He doesn't make mistakes. His eyes were like blazing fire. Jesus sees everything. He knows everything that's going on. He knows everything inside our hearts. He knows our thoughts, our feelings. Jesus knows everything. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace. Jesus is unshakable. That's a picture of him being rock firm. Nothing is going to move him. Our lives have been turned upside down by coronavirus. Jesus hasn't. Jesus is not going to be thrown off his throne. He's not going to be taken off course or out of control by anything or anyone. He's not surprised by what's happening now. Six months ago, we'd never have guessed we'd be in this situation. Jesus knew. His voice was like the sound of rushing waters. Well, that just gives that feeling of power, doesn't it? Imagine watching rushing waters flowing by and the power coming from them. Jesus is powerful to act. He's not only wise, he's not only good, he's not only perfect, he is powerful. And the last one I want to pick up on. His face was like the sun shining in all of its brilliance. Jesus is the one who gives light. We're in dark times. Where are we looking to for light? Are we looking to one who is the light of the world? Who brings light into darkness? Who is, has the sun in his face in such brilliance that actually there's no need for a sun in a new creation? Someone ruling with power. Someone ruling with authority. Someone ruling with wisdom. Or are we looking somewhere else for light in these times? And I guess that's a real question for us to think about this week. Where are we looking to for light? To the one who is the light of the world, ruling with power, or to someone else? I'm going to pray. Dear God, thank you for showing us that Jesus came back to life. But thank you for showing that he ascended into heaven. And he is now ruling with all power and authority and wisdom. We pray that that would encourage us at this time, particularly these dark times. I pray that we'd look to Jesus as the light of the world. Jesus is the one who brings light into darkness. And look to him for everything at this time. Amen. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to joining you again this time next week.